Pleasure to have everybody with us here. December 7, 2020. Great to be back at it again. Ronnie Reedus will jump, and he'll go up against Steve Wooten. We're underway. Oh, great look down low. How's that, Greg? You Immediately going inside, to, using the height of Ronnie Reedus for an easy two. What a great play. Win the tip and hustle down. We're going to get it to you. Looks like it's a turnover. It is. Looks like McCall. I thought just for a second, Edward Davis might give McCall his first dunk of the season. McCall comes baseline looking for it. Comes up strong. Big move off the glass. And the runners asserting themselves early on against this uh, Flames team that has seen three Big West Conference teams. All of them have been lopsided in the result, and the runners want to make that a fourth time. And again, early 4 nothing lead. Long pull from downtown, and Steve Wooten. Knocking down a three to give the Flames a little life early on. The runner buckets came too easy. Feed down low to Ronnie Reedus, back up to McCall. McCall spins it over. And it's going to be the czar down the baseline. Kicks it back out. McCall comes in, heads up. First dunk of the season in the Icardo Center. And who else? Justin McCall. I mentioned Rod Barnes earlier today. I had him on the radio. and uh, Off the glass. Muscle Luton. move. Luton again. That uh, The 11 points they scored in their first game at halftime, they said they'll have that by the first five minutes. Don't make me look bad. <laughs> Reedus in trouble, and he gets tied up down low. Shouldn't have been tied up with Brent, Brent, uh, Garrett Rentmeister getting the uh, jump ball there. Which, by the way, Greg, if you get a look at Rentmeister, if I've got a roommate in college, that's the guy I want with that last name. <laughs> Rentmeister. Garrett wrestles with Ronnie Reedus. Reedus out, and Big Sean Stiff in. Oh, you're going to see a lot of substitutions tonight. That's a nice stop. It is. And jumper right there, Shaquille Russell. As Greg said, Graylin Easter starting for the Roadrunners wearing double five. He comes to the top, grabs the ball, might take a shot. He does. Just off the back of the rim, battle for it down low, and it looks like Wooten's going to end up tipping it out of bounds. It'll be Roadrunner basketball. We're just underway. 7-6. The lead for the Bethesda Flames, head coach Leo Belion. Easter, despite the miss, he knocked down a couple long jumpers in the opener against Santa Clara and really looked good in their minute, his minutes on the floor. Zar Perry across and a reach in foul, and that's going to be. They're going to go over the back on probably Ironman. Iron and pulling down. Derek Ironen out of Fontana, California. Chafee Junior College. City. I get a five second here. Us. Ooh. Ball comes into stiff. Throwing the, I thought Zar was going to take it right back underneath the hoop. But he decides to come back out with it. High pick from stiff. How about this, Greg? Justin Edler Davis. One of the co-captains for the last two or three years. Oh, inbounds pass blocked. Oh, what a great play. Zar picks it up. Can't make it from point blank range, but Grelon there to scoop it in. I would imagine, Vance, despite the score or the opponent, Rod Barnes is one of gonna work on a lot of offensive sets. Well, that, Greg, and especially with all those seniors, or because of all those seniors, he wants to see some consistency. Shot up off the glass, and a battle for it between Roadrunners. Stiff kicks it off to Lazar. Here comes Perry, hard to the bucket. Has it stripped, comes back up, and he'll be fouled from behind by Rentmeister. To your point, Greg. Coach Barnes having all these seniors is not going to be looking at this game as any kind of an icebreaker. 
No, absolutely not. He wants to see results. He wants to see chemistry. Wow. Obviously, he's going to work with the rotations to see who works well with whom. So you see Zar at the foul line. Perry at the line. Now we're going to see Cam Smith come in. And how about this? Demonte Buckingham. Buck, another senior. And Cam, we understand, goes by Bino, so that we'll probably be calling him Bino yeah, Smith yeah, we, throughout the night. We've got our nicknames handed to us. Yeah. And we better get with it. We better get them out there. You know, adding to that fact of so many seniors, the runners are one of just 17 D1 squads to return at least 70% in points, rebounds, assists, steals, and blocks. So there's a lot of known commodity out there, along with some new pieces. And of course, runners in that man-to-man. -man. A great switch by the Roadrunners. I don't think Russell really was ready to pull the trigger, but he got caught in the air and had to pull it. 10-7 lead. Runners up by three here, early going. You'd like to see some intensity out of the runners. I mean, they're getting some results. They've had some easy looks, but... Oh, close. Wooten. How about that? Wooten's got her... Early seven points. We're at the 16 minute mark. Well, I said the runners would have 11 by the first five. They got a score here. Stiff on the baseline. Took a look at Vino. Stiff, strong, strong move off the glass. That's all well and good, but when you look at the big picture, you can't fall in love with that because you're not going to be playing against many teams that have 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six postmen. Understood. Tried nice to defense. One in there. Buckingham stepping right in front of that one. Buckingham, oh, a beautiful pass without a lot of space, and Perry just misses the layup. Here's a floater. And great play by Zara Perry, but they're going to say no. He fouled him on the way up. So a little bit of sloppy play to be expected, yeah. but Zara did a nice job of getting back. Well, I don't know if Zara got that ball. First half. At the line. Two shots. Gabriel Bazil. Out of Houston, Texas, Park University, at the line. Still, I'm gonna say still the same lineup, except someone just came on the floor, Greg. Tajay Moore. Moore. And that may be an offensive foul. Oh no, they're gonna call it on. I thought Sean was gonna, Sean Stipp was gonna get called for clearing out. He is not. He's been known to have that call against him. Let's let's be honest. You know, Tajay, just two of ten from the field in the game against Santa Clara. Both of them dunks. One was a thunderous left-hander over the big man for Santa Clara. If you can find his shooting range, and that's obviously what all the runners are looking for right now. Tajay battles for the rebound, comes down with it, and they're going to say foul on... Yeah, they're calling that foul on the Flames. I can't see who it is underneath. Yeah, that's going to be Chris Murray. Yeah, Chris Murray. One of the leading scorers for the Flames. 12-10, runners up two. Five minutes into this first half here. Jack Cardinals in a beautiful baseline pass. Oh, had a good look, but passed it up. Edward Davis now back over, and the ball comes down to Stiff down low. He's triple team down low, and he traveled, but they're going to call a yeah. foul. Changed his pivot foot, but he got hacked, so they will call a foul. And Coach Barnes telling him what I think Coach Greg Kerr would tell him. You either need to shoot it or pass it. But yeah. Three dudes on you. Yeah, since that double team, triple team right away, you got to look around the floor. And also, he's got to watch his feet. He had some footwork issues against Santa Clara. An offensive foul, and it's going to be called on Sean Stiff. So there now it is. Sean's having a bit of a frustrating 30 seconds here. And make no mistake about it, everybody. That is one valuable player right there to these Roadrunners. And good passing, big man. He, he, he really sees the floor. Now he's trying to sell his case to the officials. I think he was talking to coach. They were having a conversation from 50 feet away. And then he looked over at the ref. <laughs> yeah, and then he looked at the ref, yeah. standing right like this. Yeah. 
A little bit of stagnation here for the Roadrunners. Wooten from downtown. He's been feeling it early, but not there. Hey, you can feel it all you want. Yeah. That was a long, long shot. Greg and I are 25 feet off of the floor. We're just removed a little bit further than normal. So that shot looked like looked, looked even further to me, Greg. Yeah, absolutely. Just to reset the runners, Zar Perry with the ball. Sean Skiff is in. Demonte Buckingham. Taze Moore and Justin Edler Davis. Well, the five on the floor for the runners. Oh, great cut. That was a beautiful cut in there by Russell. He basically bailed out Murray. Murray was stuck. Down low, Edler Davis puts it up and in. Those are nice, but I really want to see the runners in the half-court set. And, of course, they're calling card defense. Almost. Per Perry almost got the steal. Left the man open and an easy, easy bucket in there for Wooten. A lot of hustle by the Roadrunners, but it actually deflected in the hands of... Exactly. Look out! And had that not been for the foul of Chris Murray, Tajay would have started his season off in the I Cardinal Center with a thunder dunk. Here you go, Greg. Ray Somerville. Ray Somerville. Ray Somerville's first ever bucket as a roadrunner against Santa Clara. He threw down a dunk. Sweet pass from Tajay Moore on the play. At the line, Tajay Moore. Last few seasons, Tajay has assisted in having my voice and Greg's voice on Sports Center top 10 plays. When he gets a breakaway, it seems to make the top 10 nationally. Well, if they had had that uh, feed of the Santa Clara game, that dunk, his first one, would have been on the top 10. Four point lead for the Roadrunners, 13 and a few extra seconds here left in the first half. A good give and go. Looked like a travel. Yeah, no like got away with one. Kick it in the corner. There's a nice looking offensive set right there with Chris Murray paying off with a nice three. They're going to just spread you out. Five wide. They got a small team. Somerville hammered on the way up. He'll go to the line. And at the other end, you're just going to see the runners take advantage of the height. Somerville just prevents even more problems with his size. So who go to the line? I don't think the Flames mind that, sending a big man to the line. But they did a really good job just of spreading five wide getting somebody to cut into the key and then kick it out for the open three for Murphy. Last year, or I should say Murray, excuse me. Somerville sat out the season as a red shirt. Familiar face here in the Icardo Center. Just didn't, just didn't suit up yeah. last year. 2019 graduate of the Shipley School in Pennsylvania. Earned three times, three times, he earned third term, third team All-State honors and named All-League twice, selected the team MVP. And drops that in. Second one looked good. That's already a win-win for the Flames, though. They only give up a point there. They got three on the other end. Two-point lead for the runners. Again, they've, they've got no one in the key. They float in the key, and then they kick straight out. Nice pass to Wooten. He pulls up some good, good defense out there by Tajay Moore. He closed out quick enough to maybe get a fingernail on that shot. Perry stops. Edward Davis baseline. That's an oh, he passes it down low. What a great nice pass. pass. I mean, that's an automatic bucket for him on the baseline, and he even went for a higher percentage than automatic, if you can figure that out. Yeah, he did. That's his favorite try. Edward Davis loves the baseline. A little bit of noise and chatter coming from that CSUB bench. I think Travis Henson's about to check in. Can't tell the other one. Got a travel call there. Going to be a travel or a foul, and that travel is called on Ironen. So back into the ball game is Bino, Bino Smith, and Travis Henson. Travis Henson, lefty. Another southpaw. Rod Barnes likes his ability to shoot as well. 
Didn't see a lot of that from any of the runners in game one, but that's understandable. Tajay. How about this? Into the game. Just misses. That was Henson. Yep. Eleven thirty-six left in the first half. You see Coach Barnes a little flustered at times. And bigger margin rebounding and putting them at the free throw line less, meaning the opposing team. Santa Clara went to the line thirty-one times against the runners, just fifteen. And he says playing hard is a given. We will play as many guys as possible uh, to take a look at them, to take another step forward. Keep that handy late in the second half, <laughs> you know, to see how fluid the communication is between longtime head coach and all these seniors that are leading the squad. Here we yeah. go. We're back in it. Tajay Moore across the top, looking for some space, comes in hard, draws some contact. Surprised he gave it up, but he did. Battle for it down low, volleyballing all over the place, and it ends up in the Flames' hands. So of all people to come down with it, Shaquille Russell. Oh, and he steps out of bounds after all that work. I tell you, they've been scrapping, that's for sure, the Flames have. You figure they played, what, three or four Big West teams already? They're, yeah. They're... Look at this roster and see where a lot of these players hail from. Buck is back in for Smith. McCall back in, obviously. You got Somerville and Henson over here, two new players. I would really like to see Zar Perry because he's so quick to the basket to develop that three-point shot. Henson pulls the trigger, the southpaw, front of the rim, doesn't get it to go, battle for it, ends up back in the hands again of Chris Murray. Three-point lead for the CLCB Roadrunner. Sean Stiff will check in next dead ball. A lot of contact, no call. Rebound, Roadrunners, here comes the czar, right down the middle of four, kicks it off to Buck. Buck looks for three, almost has it McCall. Big rebound, left hand off the glass. Runners getting some easy buckets, a lot of that due to their athleticism and height. I just want to, I'm, I'm watching to see how much of that would translate into buckets against Big West teams. And they're going to say offensive foul. That means the senior co-captain Buckingham stands in there and takes a charge. As Smith and Easter come in for the Roadrunners. And Buck is there. That's that's what you want. One of your captains showing everybody you're willing to take one for the team. Exactly right. Justin Edler Davis, a great example of that as well from last year. Across the top, Buck from the elbow. Beautiful shot. And really, Ben, that's what you need. This team is going to be asked to prove themselves to be a jump shooting team. They're going to see a lot of zones down the stretch against, uh, you know, Big West teams. That's a great point, Greg. Under 10, sketchy pass. Oh, he stepped out of bounds, got away with it. From corner to corner, and another wild pass. I don't think they'll get that, and they don't. It's backcourt. It's a nice defense right there by the Roadrunners, and a couple of questionable passes by the Flames. And Easter doing a really good job of going into the backcourt because if they decided not to pick it up, he was there to grab it. Nine twenty-five remaining here in this first half. Runners up 23-16. Nice defensive effort. Caused the turnover. Let's see what they can do with it. A double set on the far post. Now they bring him up. That's McCall. Stiff working down low, and they instantly are looking for that. That was the play call. Okay. Stiff knew it. He got happy down there. That's going to be on Iron in his second. You know, the runner is shooting 50%, which sounds really good, but I would say until that bucket by uh, Demonte Buckingham, the first one from a little bit of a distance, True. You know, from the elbow. A lot of them have been right there on the doorstep or follow buckets off of misses. Head coach for the Flames, 
Leo Belayan in his fifth year, fifth year. Stiff, that's what you talked about earlier, Greg, that soft touch is Todd Zay Moore is going to come in for Zar Perry. Yeah, this Bethesda school out of Anaheim, they're part of the National Christian College Athletic Association. Also members of the Pacific Coast Athletic Association. We've seen some teams from that league come in here before. Jap stiff, stiff knocks down both. Japanese players, Brazilian players. Nice backward pressure by Tajay Moore. Bad pass. Here comes McCall. He's got numbers if he wants it. McCall comes in. A great dish over the top of the shoulder to Buckingham. Boy, if this crowd was full of Icardo fans, they'd have been up waiting for McCall to rock that rim, and he would have tricked it. He would have fooled all of them with that great pass. I have a feeling if they were here, he would have done it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're right, Greg. He probably wouldn't have passed it back. Runners really trying to speed up the flames right here. Make them play a little faster than they want to, or launch a shot like that. A long shot taken way out top by Wooten. Doesn't go. He's pulled the trigger quite a few times from deep. Really like to see some good ball movement that's going to get an open look from 15 to 20 feet and see a runner knock it down. That's that's the challenge they're going to face a lot this season. Right there, that's the shot. And shoot it before they close yeah, out. Coach Barnes not happy that he didn't take it either. Graylin Easter was yeah, it. I think he wanted Graylin Easter to shoot that. And stomped all the way down the sidelines. And we may see a substitution. That might, Easter might be coming out so he can get that lesson learned. Hey, Greg, my kind of coach. You didn't shoot? You're out. <laughs> It's one thing to be unselfish until you're told to shoot. Uh, <laughs> we'll get a reach, Mal. Tippy toying down the sidelines is Russell. Some great defense, and Russell forced yeah. to take a bad shot. Rebounded by Buck. Here come the runners. Two really long looks oh, for the plays. Oh, Easton comes up and lays off the glass. And I wouldn't be surprised. And there it is. There is the timeout by coach Belion Roadrunners now 15 point lead they stretched it out pretty quickly there we'll take a short break that's Palm joined by my longtime partner Hall of Famer Greg Kerr which we haven't seen each other in eight or nine months but Greg I listen to your show religiously and kudos to you for keeping the action and the traction going with a lot a lot of sports more on that later possibly a halftime discussion 720 as we see a new look at this sean stith will he get called for the hustle foul we got a new flame in the game christian lewis into the game if i were sean it was a hustle play but that was on the edge of being out of bounds i wouldn't let that guy deal with it stiff going to the uh, bench now 31-16, the He's, Flames led for a bit here, and they've been keeping it close, but a flurry of great defensive adjustments by the road owners caused some turnovers, and they started getting some easy, easy buckets as Lewis will try to go against Buck up top. Yeah, it's going to be tough in there with McCall waiting for it. Oh. After all that, the ball rolls off the fingertips of Justin McCall. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Yeah, the runners don't mind funneling a, a guy driving into the key. They're bigger in there. They're waiting for him. Here's Wooten. He's not been sh shy about shooting. Another great block by McCall, and it's a shot clock violation. And any time of the year, Exhibition games, early season games, late season games. You get a shot clock violation. Coach, hey, coach hey, is going to love it. Practice. <laughs> Even in practice, you get a shot clock violation. One more Flames foul. They'll be going into the double bonus. Ed, Edler Davis doing the posting up. Harry pulls it out. Bucking him from the corner. Buck comes across. He's nudged, and oh, goodness. Hard foul. He'll go to the line. Number 10, Adrian Andrews. 
second personal, 310. So the runners in the double bonus the rest of the half. Latte Buckingham, shooting two. Devontae Buckingham. It's just a, one of those players, Greg, that when he starts to catch fire during a game, Absolutely. he's one of those guys that the entire team gets a boost out of it. Thirty-three, sixteen. CSUB Roadrunners making their home debut in 2020 against the Bethesda Flames. So right now the runners with a 17-point lead at 13-16. It wasn't that way early on as the Flames came out and played pretty competitive basketball for about the first 10 minutes. A little pressure here, Greg, by the Roadrunners. That's what the runners do. They'll do it against anyone and everyone. And Taze Moore coming up with a near steal right there. Ball goes out of bounds. Taze. If you play for Rod Barnes, you got to have a motor. Certainly a defensive motor. Runners in their typical man-to-man -man defense. A high feed to Murray. Murray comes in and... Just waiting for the charge call there and got it. And we think that was Zara Perry who picked up the charge. Chris Murray. Yeah, Murray's got three That's now. That's three on Murray, yeah. one of the leading scorers. Yeah. Going to have to take a seat with five minutes... To Six minutes and change to go in the first half. Be surprised if he doesn't come out of the game. Seeing one of the Flames players about to check in. It's going to be Bazile. You've got to imagine. That's for Murray. I'd go right at Murray, wouldn't you? In this possession. McCall comes in. Nice left. Rolls in and out. And that's going to be a foul on yeah, Edler yeah, Davis. Yeah. So you're absolutely right. They have a chance to get him off the floor. I think they do. Are they making a substitution? I think Murray's going to be coming out right now. Brazil still having a chat, and he does check in. All right. Oh. Five forty-nine remaining here in this first half. Thirty-three sixteen. CSU Bakersfield over the Bethesda Flames, and we're going to see Henson pop in here next time. Oh, almost, almost. And McCall thinks it actually went off of Wooten's fingertips. Two, Full court pressure by the Roadrunners. Wooten, lazy pass, gets it back, fortunately, fortunately. In the corner, a good look for Adgers, but air ball. Here comes Buck. Run on the floor. Buck looks in the corner, decides, I'll take it into myself. Oh, goodness. Can't believe he missed the dunk, and his teammates were up and ready to get rolling. And I'll tell you what, everyone liked that <laughs> except for Rod Barnes, and I'll tell you why. He would have loved to see the kick to the corner for a three. That play's not going to be there all season long. We're talking Buckingham's just going to drive the lane hey, and throw one down. I'm a selfish play-by-play yeah, play man. I know. I, I got you. I understand it. But all I know is that the coach wanted to see a corner three for a guy who's wide open. Your inference is that he's more important than me. Thanks, Greg. Thanks, Greg. <laughs> I just glad to see Buck feeling healthy and feeling no, good. No, no, absolutely. Isn't that great? Would have loved to have seen the finish. Yeah, he's had his fair share of nicks and bruises. Look out. Oh, that was going to be a fast break. That's a turnover. That is a turnover. So right now, the Roadrunners defense, you know, just being doing what it always does, just being a force. Zar Perry, uh, they had the double team on Wooten. Wooten just lost it, trying to gather. Looks like a set play is going to come in with Bino Smith. The high pick. Zarr there you go. In. That's what you the want, corner. the jump shot. That's, that's, what I'm that's what they wanted last possession. Henson knocking down a corner three. That was probably Rod Barnes' favorite play of the night so far. Wooten. Oh. Off the glass. Tell you what, yeah, off the glass from 28 feet. What's wrong with that? Wooten had an early seven and really went on a dry spell and 
I'm sure that felt good just going in. Czar down low, a foul as Vino goes up. That's Cameron Smith, and he'll go to the line. 6'7", junior. The Pearl River Community College, Oklahoma, Mississippi is his hometown. And boy, Coach Barnes very excited about Cameron Bino Smith. You know, one guy we haven't mentioned and certainly should have by this point in time. This is going to be a different looking team when Sean Williams joins. He's a Kansas State transfer. He's not eligible just yet. They thought they were going to get some eligibility sooner from Kansas State. When he comes on, he's a distributor. He is the type of guard that Rod Barnes loves. And uh, he'll make a difference on this team when Sean Williams is actually playing for the runners, which should be, by the way, in about a week or so. Tosh Moore is going to come back in for Zara Perry. <laughs> Garrett Rentmeister back into the game for the Flames. I mean, you look at this right now, this Flames team. You know, 6'5 is the biggest man out there. And there are some... Although the runners aren't real big right now. Yeah, but... There's some high leaping guys out there right now. <laughs> Runners bringing that defense up high, stretching it out. Russell's going to try to start the offense against Easter. But now only eight seconds left on the shot clock, so Wooten's not afraid to shoot. It's a lot of time. That's a nice bucket right there. So it's not for Wooten. The runners, oh, Greg Kerr. Travis Henson starting to get warmed up. The southpaw. I told you the lefty can shoot. I told you that Rod Barnes wants to see that kind of play. Wooten tries to answer. Now Tajay Moore has it on the far side. The one-hander, oh, what a great looking pass. McCall comes in, kicks it in the corner. Un Selfish Roadrunners have there found the again. hot hand. They, they have found the hot hand in Travis Henson. Great, Grayland Easter could have shot that shot, but he saw, hey, Henson's just hit two, give it to him. Now he's got three. Roadrunner bench up. Great hustle. Trouble, trouble. And it's going to be a jump ball possession. Tell you what, Henson's getting some uh, some points with the coach, getting on the floor and knocking down threes. 318 remains in his first time. 4421. Runners starting to stretch things out here with 318 remaining here in the first half. Henson. Another shot. Oh, two or three point blank misses for the Roadrunners. Another one. Another one. Uh, That's five. And finally. Yeah, they got the bucket, but the shooting percentage just went down. But team rebounds <laughs> went up. Greg. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. The offensive rebounds go through the roof. Rentmeister out to Wooten. Wooten comes in up off the glass. Can't get it to go. Battle for it down low. Tajay Moore has. Nice defense by Somerville. Lob. Oh. I'm telling you right now, knowing Rod as I do and just looking at his body language across the court, he's not looking for highlight reel film. He's not looking for that. He's looking for basketball. He's looking for set plays. He's looking for chemistry. He's not looking for alley-oops and dunks. 25-point lead came quick. The runners just almost out of nowhere, it seemed like. Brent Meister deep in the corner. I mean, really deep. Offensive rebound by Wooten. That's some hustle right there. And he gets the bucket. Nice work. Wooten has proved to be difficult. Well, Greg, the team has 23 and Wooten has 17. Yeah. So, the wrecking ball. Number 23, Steve Wooten, shooting one. shot. Henson, by the way, the runner's leading score with nine by virtue of those three threes that came in a hurry. Luton misses the foul shot. Bino with a high screen, and that's a forced pass down there. Tajay, not a good look at all. Those one-handed passes, you can't bring them back. I'd really like to see Tajay take a few jumpers as well. This game can't be all... 
driving and throwing down dunks. Long shot up, back of the rim, does not go for Shogo Yasunobu into the ball game. When you're Ray Sorville, when you pull that rebound down, you got to keep it up high. You can't bring it down. Almost had it stripped away there. There's a nice up and under by Tajay Moore. I thought he was maybe asking out. Yeah, he is asking out. Yasunobu with 12 on the shot clock. And what's the call? Might be a hold call on Might be on Somerville. Yeah, I think so. Looks like Ray Somerville might get caught in the hold and down low. Wooten will be going to the line to shoot one and one. Graylin Easter is going to pop in. Sean Stiff will come in for the Roadrunners. Number 23, Steve Wooten. And again, Steve Wooten out of Chicago. Head coach Leo Belion, by the way, not putting anybody on the line here for rebounding. So this is all on Wooten just to sink the free throws. So again, one and one. So easy possession and rebound for the runners. And it looks like we have a timeout called by Coach Barnes. He wants to speak specifically yes. to his guys with one all weight left. Well, that's it. You got a 25 point lead with one minute left in the first half. That's because you want to life changes. And I'm not so saying right. it's better, but it's easier. So right, so right. There's been a, a lot of changes, and, and thank goodness enough of them for us to be here calling this game live. This is great stuff. Just a, a thrill to be back inside the Icardo Center on the iconic blue floor. One minute left here in this first half. They move it around. They get it to Stiff. They get it down low. Sean down low even further. Smith gets it stripped from him, though. Bino brings the ball down low like Greg just said not to do. Good hands by Murray, who's back in the game with three fouls, by the way. I'd go right at him again. Runners, the last possession. You got to go whoever 11's covered. Yasunobu up top on Buck. They float it in. Oh, dangerous pass. Wooten ends up with it, of course. Hey, there's a wide open look to finish the half. Doesn't get it to go. Rebound, Roadrunners. I know there's not much strategy here. You're up by 25, but I'd still go at 11. A lot of contact, lots of contact, and of all the fouls to get called, it's going to be Big Sean Stiff over the top on Murray. Looked like, looked like the Tsar got beat up on the way to the hole a couple times. Yeah, so Murray's going to go to the foul line. Tajay will pop in for the Tsar. And at the line will be Chris Murray out of Detroit. Wait, wait, He's a wait. Quick, speedy junior guard. And Roadrunners have eight fouls. Rattles in and out. Second straight miss on front end of one and one. Let's see if the Roadrunners try to put something together here just to drain it to the very last second. Looks like that's the uh, looks like that's the plan. Tajay looks for a high pick. Into the corner, they move it around. Oh, what a beautiful pass. Does it go? It does not. And Wooten floats one up, and that will do it at the end of the first half. 48-23, 48-23 here on ESPN. Stay tuned. We have some stats, some highlights, and some more discussions for you at halftime. On the floor, the Flames will get the ball first. As my partner Vance Palm will take over the play-by-play -play right here. And uh, the Flames will go be going from our right to our left as they inbound the ball. So at the halfway point, what Coach Barnes gave you that you saved in your phone, we'll see, we'll see just where we're at after that first 20 minutes. Exactly. We'll talk a little bit about the offense and what he wants to see. At the elbow, they start the offense. Wooten has it stripped. Tajay Moore, four on one. Tajay looking for a gap. Off to Edward Davis, and oh, my goodness. <laughs> Ed, he ad-libbed in the air. <laughs> I think he wanted to make one extra pass. I think he did. It got clogged yeah. up, and he said, well, I'll just let sheer talent and athleticism take over. That would have looked bad if he had missed, by the way. No, the Roadrunners just not having it. Tajay again to lead the turnover break. Oh, McCall with a beautiful seam. Tajay says, I've got it myself. So 
Coach Belan not digging the start here for his Flames. Tajay got to the rim. He could have thrown it down if he wanted to. Two quick turnover buckets for the Roadrunners to start this second half. Long shot goes up. Doesn't look good. Isn't. McCall. McCall leading the break. Over to Buckingham. Buck to the elbow. Comes in. Has it stripped. McCall ends up with it again. Oh, double dribble. They don't call it. And contact. And Tajay Moore able to slow things down here a little bit. Tippy toe along the sidelines. They get it down to Edler Davis. Edler posts up. Puts it in. No. Doesn't go. Thought that went in for a second. Rentmeister down low. And that's going to be uh, Ronnie Reedus on the foul down there. I was going to say that's a tough angle for Brazil. Oh, sorry, that's, that's Ironen. Ironen. Look at here, Greg. Jack Schumann coming in. You know, when I saw him on TV in the Santa Clara game, I, it looked like he had bulked up a little bit. I didn't know. Or maybe it's just the hair got longer. I don't know what it was. No, he has. Schumann on Ironen. Transfer out of Colorado State, by the way. Jack will shoot the three. Nine on the shot clock. Rentmeister. Ironen up against Schumann. Schumann, great defense. Great job on defense. To battle for it down low. Ends up somehow. Oh, nice look hustle. At this. Look at this. That's Devontae That's... going to the floor again. You'd love to see that. Bazil and Buck giving each other a little dap. Yeah, I love that, don't you? One of your co-captains just flat on the floor with a 29-point lead. Yeah. Perry will walk it across. Tajay out now. To me, this is the perfect game right now. Second half, Zar Perry to just shoot a couple threes. Across the top, McCall, baseline, looking for any little gap, and he does not get the bucket. He got the gap, fouled on the shot. And Justin McCall, as always, sniffing that rim. And going to the line, the region product. Justin McCall, what a special young man. Last year played in all 31 games. I remember that one game against Kansas City. Eight points, 12 boards. And he is an academic yeah. as well. Sub in here after they handed the ball to the shooter. Stoppage of play as we're going to see. Hey, it's 2020. Let's Yasunobu. <laughs> yeah. McCall makes the second. Yasunobu going up against Zar Perry. What a matchup that's going to be in this second half. Yasunobu's got some nice handles, tries to thread the needle, and that's going to be, oh, look at that. That was a lucky, lucky break. That's a tough pass for a, a bigger guy. Wooten's not a big man, per se. He's not a 6'9 guy, but he's the biggest they got there. And a bounce pass from short range to make a big man go down and get it. Tough pass to receive. Got a great touch, though. We've seen that already today. tonight. Wooten knocks it in. Schumann had a quick discussion with Coach Barnes. I mean, Greg, we we hear Coach Barnes when this place is packed. Yeah. That billowing voice of his now is even more pronounced. Czar across the top. Come on, Jack, come on. Switch, switch, switch. Ten on the shot clock. They swing it over to Bucky now. Devontae back over to Edler Davis. One good pump fake and a sweet That's stroke. what you want. Beautiful stroke. Shooter shoot, and I tell you, that's what you need. You need these guys to have short memories, whether it's from last year, last game, whatever. Start knocking down some jumpers. 
We know they can get to the rim against this team. Knock down some jumpers. Yashinobu has some nice handles, but he does not pick up a lot of, game, of ground and throws the ball away. So it's one thing to have some handles. It's another to be able to... And I don't know if you noticed, the rim was wide open. <laughs> yeah. I think he anticipated defense coming at him. He said, no way I could shoot this. 30-point lead for the Roadrunners. Comfortable lead here in their first home game of the 2020-2021 season. On the road at Arizona on Wednesday. So that's the deep end of the pool. <laughs> yeah, when we get an opportunity, we'll talk a little bit about the schedule. And obviously, this is the inaugural season of Big West competition here. I want to cover that. Looking forward well to that. Greg. A busy week, by the way, as Idaho comes here on Saturday. Roadrunners still in that man. They're going to probably stay in it all night long. A long pull from Wooten. Wooten rattles one in and out, bucking him with the rebound. Here come the Roadrunners. Perry down the far side. Thought about passing. Finally does to Edward Davis. Schumann's going to set the high All right, That's the shot you want. Elder Davis likes that shot, too. To the elbow, and a beautiful stroke by Edler Davis. And it's going to be a timeout called by Coach Belion with 15 and a half here left in this second half 57 25 it's all road runners right now on espn back right after this this microband forms a bacteria shield that keeps killing bacteria for 24 hours even after multiple touches try microband 24 this has been medifax for microband 24. <laughs> And welcome back to the Ag Cardo Center, who rejoined the action between the runners and the Flames and CSUB with their biggest lead of the game of 32 points. Greg Kerr alongside Vance Palm here at the Ag Cardo Center in Bakersfield, California. Happy you can join us as, again, the runners who trailed early in this one 10 to 9, but it's been all road runners ever since. They retain possession right here with six seconds left on the shot clock. <laughs> Rebound by the runners, so have a healthy advantage on the boards as well. As you would imagine, the Flames' biggest player is Steve Wooten at 6'6". We'll get back to live action as Zara Perry is going to inbound it under the bucket. There's six seconds left on the shot clock for the runners. And Idler Davis catch and shoot off the front rim. Rebound to McCall. He's going to work down, try to pass it through traffic in the key. That was ill-advised attempt there. Here come the Flames. And the bucket in transition, a rare transition bucket for the Flames. That was Jafet Pineda with the basket. His first basket of the game. Boy, Pineda's now going to pick up a foul. And he knew he knew McCall was right behind him. I'll tell you what. First team foul. And the runners substitution liberally here. In fact, four of the five coming in. Tajay, Easter, Stiff, Bino. And Henson. Yeah, right. Five for five, Greg. Yeah. Well, brand new five, Rod Barnes. Again, he's looking at these rotations. I'll tell you what, he's looking at things right now with us, but I can guarantee he's going to watch the tape over and over and over again to see how guys play with other certain guys. That's what this game's all about. Tajay Moore. Almost caught in the air. Two-point attempt there, no good off from Eno Smith. Here come the Flames. Deep three. Off the mark right there. Rentmeister, Rentmeister not shy about hoisting up three. Nice pass by Tajay Moore. Now it's going to be called the guts on Woot, and that's going to send Eno Smith to the line. You know, great end to end, end to end right now. You've got to be happy with the Roadrunners' effort. Yes, they're fast breaks. Yes, they want to get a dunk. Yes, they want to get, you know, the nice pass for two. They had that gone in. But end to end, nobody's, nobody's, nobody's dogging it. No, not at all. That foul, by the way, was on Rentmeister. As Peter Smith makes the first of two. Yeah. 
Second one is short. Nice hustle by Sean Stiff. He saves it. The big fella. Back out top to Tajay Moore. Cam Allen's asking for it. He's got a smaller, much smaller Pineda on him down low. Yeah. And, and that, that's the call. You know, you got a guy in Bino Smith. He's played some big minutes and some big games in his early collegiate career. He has played in some oh. regional championship game every minute of some of these. Games. He's also 6'7", Pineda's 5'6". Right. He's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a, a presence out on the floor that these roadrunners are, are just going to maximize, hopefully. You love the scrapping. They're scrapping hard. Oh, what oh, a goodness. block. Goodness. Oh, my Great. goodness. Henson. Travis Henson's done a little bit of everything. Oh, what a sweet move. It was. Easter missing. Stiff gets the follow in the bucket. Wow. Braylon Easter, after missing his last shot, I think he sort of shied away from taking a second straight jumper, but he made a great move to the hole. Stiff followed it in and got the foul. And what a great play by Travis Henson at the other end to get that block. Sean Stiff at the line, 30 games last year, started 17 times, and his field goal percentage, 55% when the season was called short. And he completed the three-point play. There's Wooten working out, and he's just going one on four right there and turns it over. And here come the runners. Try to get it down to Bino. Yeah. Another tip. Great. Good hands by the Roadrunners. Henson lighting up another three. It's fourth of the game. The runners lead extending to 64-27 as we're approaching 12 minutes left in the game. Buck will come in next dead ball, Greg. Something called on the far side. I didn't see the call. Easter and Smith coming out. Monte Buckingham and Edler Davis in. And again, this is Rod Barnes mixing and matching to see the chemistry. Runners. Well, Brazil takes it up top again. Feeds it down low to Wooten. Wooten. Wooten's never shy, and he knocked down another three. You know what? If he if he sets up his shots correctly, they're beautiful. He does that little, just that fake shimmy, and just pulls it. Uh, That's what he needs. So 64-29. The Czar's being guarded up top by Pineda. Wooten's got 21 of those 29. Henson on fire tonight. But Edward Davis. He's been finding his stroke from that 15 to 18 foot range. Baseline cut off well down there. Oh, good good job by Henson. Sure was. Henson doesn't use his arms. He, did, he just... He, Blocking him left wide open. Does that go? It does. And now it looks like fatigue might be starting to set in here for the Flames. And they have an entire 11 and a half to go here. And it is a 40 point lead for CSU Bakersfield. And the tip in foul shot goes. And the bucket. <laughs> he asked, did it go in? It did go in. <laughs> it did go in, and that's Gabriel. Monica had written on every individual little bag words of encouragement and support. That was just going above and beyond. We work very well together. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Gabriel Brazil made the shot. 
while we're away. What a strong move by Henson, but he misses it. Somerville into the game and scores the bucket. And a little bit of a reach in there. Yeah, you're going to get that 100 times. Ray Somerville, a hundred. my partner, ever the sports broadcaster, informs me that it is 2020 one more time. The Washington Football Club beat the undefeated Steelers. Yes, they did. 23-17. Ay, ay, ay. Double team down low. Great job by Zar Perry. Didn't get caught yes. for a foul. Into the corner. Henson, is he still on fire? He is. Likes to strum that little three guitar when he's done, too. Wow. Beautiful stroke. With all the talent that the Roadrunners have been able to compile and put together, a pure stroke added to their rocker is going to be a welcome, welcome part of their briefcase. Okay. He's just feeling it now. He's just feeling it. He looks like the former Greg McCall. And his, his uh, teammates are loving it too over there on the bench. 9.54 remaining in this second half. The Roadrunner's back, man. I looked back at him, and I winked at him because he knew what I was thinking. Man, that looks like somebody I know. And he goes, man, Travis can shoot. That's six threes. All 18 of his points coming by the three ball. And he is not shy. Good feed down low. Rentmeister comes up just a hair short. McCall with the rebound. The czar. Floats one up to Buck. He gets back over to Tajay, and that is beautiful. Oh, no, that's not even Tajay. That's Henson. <laughs> Normally, when I see somebody floating through the yeah. rafters in the yeah. Icardo Center, I just yeah. say Tajay. Look at this. That's beautiful. It's Henson. No bucket, by the way. So all his points are still of the three-point variety. Basket called off. That was a foul on the Flames, by the way, on, on the pass. When I see a high-flying lefty coming through the Icardo Center out of repetition, it's always Tajay. What a big dunk. He's feeling it. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Wow. Save a few for Wednesday. <laughs> I looked over to our play-by-play -play radio man, Isaac Lohenkron, and he and I both looked at each other and went, wow, at the same time. Okay. Finally misses one. The other lefty, Jack Schumann, comes down with the rebound, misses, gets his own rebound. And Ronnie Reedus waiting to come back in. Haven't seen Ronnie in quite a while. 8.45 remaining here in regulation. 80 to 36. All Roadrunners tonight. Henson back over to Perry. Buck to Justin McCall. Justin, a floater. Gets off the rim. No good. shot clock violation. Good defense by Wooten on that play. Sure was. Wooten's going to the hole. Oh, my that goodness. That an offensive foul. A collision. And another one taken by the captain. That's two by Buck. And now we're going to see Easter and Reed. I'm guessing Henson's coming out. And he is. I, I think Rod's seen enough. <laughs> hey, put, it, put that thing back in a holster. We need it Wednesday night. Greg mentioned it. They'll be at Arizona two nights from tonight. And Rod's thinking, hey, keep it warm. That's going to be fun to watch Wednesday night. Well, I'll tell you what. The first thing Arizona's going to do if they don't see any of this, they'll see this game. But they'll look at the stat sheet. They'll see a guy made seven threes. <laughs> He's not going to get a lot of easy looks on Wednesday. Bizarre. Over to Easter. Easter, strong move inside. Doesn't finish. How about this? Ronnie Reedus brings the ball in a little too low. Gets hassled. You know, uh, Vance, it was just a couple weeks ago I was in contact with a guy named Kenny Warren 
who at one time made a lemon. The top layer, if home had a flavor, it would be Chick-fil-A's mac and cheese. I'm passionate about it. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Ronnie Reed is the owner at the line. You know, Ronnie was named Orange Empire Conference Defensive Player of the Year and First Team All-State in the 2018-2019 season. He was, also, he was also named Most Impressive Walking Off the Bus. Man, man. <laughs> I'll tell you what. <laughs> Big fella. Runner's going to a zone defense here. Why not, Greg? Exactly. Two, the, one, two. the Flames are probably saying, thank goodness. Wooten's just waiting for the three ball. Ironing comes up short, or was it a fantastic pass? Oh, Could have been a fantastic pass. Justin Clark, they just brought onto the team. Justin Clark is a brand new player, is a senior. That's going to be on uh, Brent Meister. Greg, we say this all the time in broadcasting, and it's not meant in any other way but a compliment if it's genuine, and that is when you see teams that are down big, if they keep playing hard, if they keep working hard, you got to tip your hat to them. Absolutely. And they are here. But you know what? It also says it speaks to your coaching. It speaks to work ethic, and that goes for the team winning by 42 points, too. Rod Barnes is not going to look for anybody to do anything less than 100% out here on the floor, especially this early in the season. You're, you're trying to get some rotation minutes right here, right? You know that as a former roadrunner, right? You, you, this early in the season, you're not impressing, trying to impress the fans. You're trying to impress the guy who gives you minutes. Of course, and if you're Coach Belion, you know, you've played some tough, tough teams already in this very shortened and abbreviated season. So these kids are, these players, student athletes are gonna be battle tested. Seven minute mark remaining here in regulation. And I'll tell you the mindset of Rod Barnes as well. I learned this earlier this afternoon as Wooten launches another three. They play, they're playing now. They play at Arizona Wednesday. They play Idaho on Saturday. And Rod Barnes told me earlier today on radio, Greg, if I can get a game on Sunday, we'll play. He's looking. He's really looking for a game Sunday. So four games this week if he can get it. There's a team up. 99. Yeah, that'd be nice to see that. Oh, Bakersfield guy running that for, that, that program. That'd be beautiful. 639 remaining here in regulation. Best of luck to Justin Hudson and Bulldogs VHS product. Six and a half remaining in regulation. Zara Perry. It's easy to be wowed by uh, Travis Henson and what he's done. I like Graylin Easter's game. I really do. Hey, there's Zar Perry taking that oh, nice little eight footer. There you go. Need more of that from Zar as well. He's a great s slasher, especially when he gets a bigger guard on him. He can really take him to the hole. Well, that's a nice move. A nice kick over to Rentmeister. Rentmeister has not made a bucket yet tonight, I don't believe. Nope. <laughs> He has not paid the rent. Greg, I had to do it. I had to, I had to do it. Read his sloppy pass. You'll be fine. <laughs> Easter gets a bucket. His fourth of the evening, fourth point of the evening, and Coach Belion is still going to call some timeouts. He's just not going to put up with those easy six, eight footers. But, 545 remaining here and we will be back right after this ones that are impossible to forget the new memories hilton and our family of hotels Eighty-five, thirty-eight. csu bakersfield roadrunners taking care of business in their first Game in that Cardinal Center in a long, long time. Shot goes up by Clark, rebounded by the Roadrunners. Buckingham down the floor, loses the handle, and that will be Flames basketball. Rod Barnes' body language yep. just says everything about everything when he sees a play he doesn't like, even with this big a lead. Whoop. 
I don't know if Wooten's a volume scorer all the time, but he is a volume shooter. Well, he's 23 <laughs> of their 38 points. Yeah. Down to Stiff, and Stiff, uh, he may have it, sold that who's one. the call going to be on? I don't know. At first, I thought they were going to get the call on uh, Stiff, but it might be on Wooten. Yeah, and Wooten can't believe it. Yeah, he looks a little surprised. Wooten's like, good. Yeah. You see how big that guy is, ref? He got cleared out. He's thinking you got the two and the three and the three and the two mixed up. There's a great shot right there of the obvious lengths being gone to to make all this happen. You see the training staff back there and the players physically distanced. Absolutely. Stiff with that nice smooth stroke. Remember when he came to CSU Bakersfield and his first game as a roadrunner here in that Cardo Center, he got fouled and he went up to the line and then he just kept making him and kept making him and kept yeah. making him and kept making him and almost got in the record books in the Division One realm. Beautiful soft stroke. There's a good look at the main man here. Makes it extreme difficult to come in here and win in the AI Cardo Center. No matter who you are, you absolutely have to bring your A game into Bakersfield. Tough floor. And Sean makes them both, and he'll jog off. 86-38. Here come the Flames, trying to finish off these five minutes in style. We'll see as the Roadrunners again try to stay in that active zone defense. I think a big part of this for Rod Barnes, too, is to... Make sure you're blocking out in that zone as well, not just playing the active zone. Well, the only way Murray, the, the, the way you're going to beat the zone is exactly what Murray did. Yeah, just penetrate Murray with the bucket. Just find a gap in there. You got the bounce there. The flames in that man-to-man -man defense. Runners willing to be patient. It's Easter with ball at the top of the key over to Buckingham inside. The runners have made some unwise pass, entry passes into the key. Wooten missing the transition lane. And it looks like we're going to get a jump ball here. That's going to stay to the Flames. Justin Clark, the newcomer, is down. Looks like he's going to be all right. But, you know, you got Ronnie Reedus <laughs> at 6'9", 240, They're... being guarded by Christian Lewis. Uh, Lewis. Down low, that's just, you know, there's no reason to force it. And just have him work the blocks a couple times, and he'll get it. Yeah. Uh, top of the Flames, though, Rentmeister with the ball. That's a nice job by the runner defense. Really, again, active. Wooten gets the bounce. <laughs> knocks it down. Hey, you shoot numbers game. Yeah. You're going to get some. Wooten with 25. See, look at this mismatch right here. They've got Ronnie Reed is being guarded by Christian Lewis. Ronnie stays active. There you go. That's exactly right. That's what you... Stay you got that one, big fella. Just move around, and sooner or later, that big of a mismatch, they're going to find you. Now, Lewis goes 6-2. Give it away, Doug. And Ronnie Reedus going to the foul line for the runners. One shot, one shot, one shot. Take a look at what the uh, Roadrunners schedule looks uh, like ahead as they will be on the road at Arizona. That's a... Uh, Five o'clock mountain time, so that's four o'clock start here in Bakersfield. And that is on Wednesday. They will be home to Idaho on the 12th this Saturday. Life Pacific comes in the next Saturday, and then they start conference play at home right here at the Icardo Center. Back to back games against UC Davis. Their first voyage into the Big West Conference. Can't wait, Greg. Looking forward to that. Davis actually played Santa Clara as well. We have that in common. Again, Reed is a mismatch. If they can just keep looking down there to get it to him, and and you got to think with 325 or 326 left, you know, in a game that's a blowout, is exactly what you talked about, Greg. Coach Barnes is going to just, just work. You see him right down there running, just in the in the right of your screen. If they can get him active and really get him to to be awarded with these buckets of right. hard work. Boy, that gets infectious to him and everybody else. Absolutely. Hey, you mind if we throw a non-basketball shout out here as we got, you know, 326 left in a 50-point game? Do a partner. I wonder which best of luck to uh, Pastor James Ranger, who's been on The Voice, and he's still eligible to win the whole thing. 
He'll be on tonight. He's in the lives. You're a singing guy. You got a great voice. He's on the voice, and uh, I've known James. I go to that. I actually go to that church. Uh, but James Ranger again is competing on the voice tonight, and he's just a really great guy. He is such a he's a he's a immensely talented singer, but he's a wonderful man as well. So I just want to wish the best to James Ranger. You know, Greg, you can tell you can tell which of those contestants that those stars like and what those star, who those stars appreciate and gravitate to. He's a wonderful yeah. young man. Yeah. They really do. I, I, I actually think John Legend likes him as much as Blake does, and Blake's his coach. So, you know. Well, there's a coach right there in Leo Belion who has scheduled some difficult, difficult teams for his flames to kind of cut their teeth in this crazy season. And good for you, Leo, because when you play some of your own teams in your own league, you'll be ready. Absolutely. Take advantage of this deep pool in California. Under three to go. You know, Smith almost got called for a reach in there. Good aggressive defense, but a little, little bit of a matchup zone they got going on here. Entry pass. Three runners on the boards. You like to see that. But Sean Stiff might shoot a three. 222 remaining here in regulation. They pull it back and it. I'd see one more look at Ray Somerville. Yeah. Come in. All right, Buckingham has it right in front of us. Ronnie with the high pick. Oh, almost stolen from Delonte Buckingham. It looked like it actually went, and that is a bad, tough foul to take. Oh, goodness, all that great defense, and Porta is going to get called for a foul, and they had yeah. Buck in trouble. I'll tell you what, Eliab Porta, though, has a lot of energy. Coming off the bench, he said, I'm going full force here. From Sao Paulo, Brazil. Buck, back of the rim, miss. So as Greg mentioned, at the end of this month, UC Davis will come in for a back two-day back-to-back. -back. Weekend here against the Roadrunners, 4 p.m. game. Obviously, Greg and I will be your audio and visual conduit to catching the Roadrunners at home this year. Our great colleague Isaac Lowenkram will be with the Roadrunners all season long on the road as well. Voice of the Runners. Radio. Yep. Wooten. <laughs> you know, Wooten's that guy at the park. He's he a 30. Wooten's that guy at the park. He's a pass me the ball and he doesn't even hear you. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna, he wants to get 30. Yeah. Yeah. Somerville. A nice little look. baby hook there by Ray. Didn't fall, but it looked good. Murray got in early foul trouble. Clark pulls the trigger. That doesn't go. Big rebound by Wooten. That's Somerville Clark. knocks it away. Playing hard to the end. You got to ask yourself, and again, I know, again, who they're playing right now. I wonder how much zone Coach Barnes will use this year. He very generally little, right? doesn't use very much. But you never know. I'll answer that question confidently. And how about this? Travis Henson Travis getting Hinton. to the floor. Just because he missed a three, finally. <laughs> a foul on the play, and that's Chris Murray that's going to get called for that foul. So Murray's going to pick up his fourth foul. As we have a free throw situation here, Greg, give your final report card on tonight for the uh, Roadrunners. I think Rod Barnes saw some things out of his offense that he's really going to like, sharing the ball, and, and in the case of Henson, it's obvious, shooting threes. Um, I think there's still a lot of... Uh, and maybe it was just, you know, you're in a 30-point game, 40-point game, you get a little careless. Some of their entry passes down low were not uh, crisp or wise, sometimes thrown into the crowd. But I do like this. I love the effort. There's guys hitting the floor with 40 minutes, 40-point lead. Um, I really like that. But I think this is going to be a team that's going to be tested to score from the perimeter more than they've been asked to tonight outside of Henson. So we'll see. We'll see a lot against Arizona. We'll see in 48 hours or less. Yeah. Exactly. Under a minute to go here. I'll say this, though. I think Rod Barnes and his team relishes the role of being the underdog. They don't mind going to Arizona. They've played it many times. Turnover. 
And Buck will jog it up. Half a minute left in regulation. There's only a five second differential on the clock. Seven second, actually. So maybe uh, Jake Schumann will take a shot. Try to get it down to Somerville again. That's a one turnover. Those, that's one of those entry passes I'm talking about. Wooten has it knocked away from by Somerville, and this ought to do it here. Yeah, they can just knock off. They don't have to do anything now. Just cross half court. Uh, or lose it. Oh, goodness. <laughs> And another now, miss. Now you can roll it out. That's not what Rod Gordon wanted to see in the final seconds, but... Partner, great to see you. Great to be with you again. And we look forward to being on the air again. The next ESPN broadcast from the Icardo Center is Friday.